but but maybe we can just start off with like a definition i think like w- what is a, a fatal convenience well uh it's always great to use an example um you know but certainly uh from the broad perspective it's things that we're doing mostly habitual that we're doing every day that we don't realize um can potentially and most often harming us in some way and that that is usually expressed through the daily things the the kind of water we're drinking the kind of food we're eating to your point the ultra processed uh, to the lotions, the shampoos, the colognes, the perfumes, the makeups, the beauty products, the deodorants, the dental floss, the the cleaning products, the mouthwash, the clothing, um, you know, the, the shining example that's screaming at us, I think, is like the cell phone and the polarized radiation that we've created. And it's invisible. And that's the that's a slippery slope because we can't see it. It's even more dangerous uh, in a certain sense than smoking, because at least smoking, you can smell it and see it relatively. Um, and, it, and it took them 40 years of lying for us to finally become aware. So it is it is an it is it is this ridiculous to use your uh your name it is a ridiculous situation that we've all been born into why do i say that because there is 60 to 80,000 chemicals and toxins that largely are untested none of them are tested as they interact with one another and barely any of them, uh, a thousand, couple thousand at best of those, are tested for any sort of safety. Most of those aren't tested for actual in real life safety data, right? So, so we are swimming in this sea of products that we're using all over the place every day. Uh, that we're constant, constantly being exposed to things like parabens, phthalates, PCBs, pesticides, herbicides, larvicides, insecticides, petroleum, nylon, elastane, uh, PFAS, uh, which is a derivative of, of Teflon uh, that now certainly in the United States, over 50% of the population um, is exposed to PFAS through the drinking water. And how the hell did that happen? Because the industrial use of it has then reinfected the environment, whereas they're using these in carpets for stain resistance, T-shirts for uh, stain resistant or wicking ability for waterproofing, uh, baby bibs that are easy to wipe off, um, coatings for containers of food so that the food doesn't stick to it. It's heat resistant, it's slippery. So <clears throat> we have an infinite amount of chemicals that largely fall into s- several categories. Number one, they cause stress. Perpetual, persistent stress in the body phthalates and parabens that can show up as plasticizers and plastic water bottles to also in lotions and and parabens that are a type of preservative in cosmetic products and lotions and things like this that can show up in all of these different ways and we keep reinfecting ourselves some of these things have half lives and shelf lives in the body so the body metabolizes them but in that whole process of exposure you're having you're being thwarted through your your operating systems of your bodies your endocrine system so mimicking compounds of estrogen mimicking compounds found in plastic plastic water bottles 
some of these parabens and things like that. So now, so now you have reduction of, of, of testosterone, both male and female. You have the increase of estrogen-like compounds, both in male and female. You have sperm uh, viability, motility, uh, potency of sperm that's plummeting. It's a great book called Countdown by Dr. Shanna Swan, who I interviewed in the book. Uh, another great book, uh, Fat, Sick, and... Uh, Nearly did. Uh, fat, fatter, Sicker, Poorer uh, by uh, Dr. Leo Trasande. So these are giants and doctors and researchers in these areas screaming from the rooftop, which is why I needed to, because my genesis of this whole thing, which I can talk about later, is my father suffered from and by a lot of these chemicals in the 90s. So this has been playing in my life for a long time. This has been give I've been been getting information on this for about 30 years and I I came together in this book with about um about 15 to 20 researchers to aggregate all of this research and then try to try to summarize the best that I can in in many of these chapters so that we can kind of wake up to the products in the aisles that you're buying and shopping for and using are largely mostly uh, dangerous. Um, and I wish it wasn't the case. I wish there wasn't actual carcinogenic compounds and benzenes and oxobenzenes and sunscreen. The very nature of them getting you to buy the product is under the guise that you're going to get cancer from the sun. And the many of the ingredients that are actually in there have been overwhelmingly, continuously being shown to per, to perpetuate and potentially cause cancer. It's like it, it is like Twilight Zone. Every chapter has multiple Twilight Zone situations in there. That um, this is loaded with data. This is loaded with research. 